<clears throat> Excuse me, I've been trying to dig up my slides and things from before, <laughs> so it's interesting. So anyway, um, if, I, if I need to dig up my slides, I will, but I've been actually going through and, and the recordings are useful, it turns out. Um, what I presented in the, in the meeting was various directions we could go. One was the Sun Pai route, which was have a central organization and have PEPs in, or Pi HCEPs or whatever they are, and have a very organized thing, but it doesn't seem like we quite are ready for that. Um, then there was various conversations about just doing things with examples, making our examples pages better. Um, is John Vandergriff here? No, he's not. Oh well. But John was saying he he has a project in the HDE, which they haven't really cranked up yet, but um, that we work on getting the infrastructures compatible through essentially data models, making sure you can communicate. Um, and then this all relates back to, is there a way to add some funding into the mix? Well, two questions about the funding. One is, is there a way to add the funding into the mix to help this general integration and the second thing about the funding was, um, why are we getting fewer proposals this year? What is the, what is the issue? Is it just COVID? And many people said COVID was actually a part of it. I bet something trying to do something. What is it? Sounds like Skype. Oh, I know what it is. No, I don't know what it is. Yeah, I think it was the telephone, the quote telephone from uh, Teams. There are far too many communication mechanisms now. <laughs> So anyway, I don't know, let's, let's just open it up initially to, and do people remember anything about what they talked about? I mean, we talked about uh, dockers and uh, examples and alternatives to docker. Um, there's the idea of hiring Sean to go through code and try to make things fit together. Um, getting more use cases and and John Vandergriff pointed out that yeah it's nice to do this integration but when you do the integration if you have all these packages you're essentially having to pick to some degree and 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 people don't want to have their package go away. Um, one thing I found interesting was that we think of I think of Python as being wonderful because it has namespaces that allow you to make code that doesn't tread on each other's toes. On the other hand, the dependencies of those codes can be incompatible. So that's another aspect of things. So anyway, um, I think I'll just open it up to the thoughts of any, along any of those lines. Uh, do people see things that can be done with funding that, that are useful? Or not. <laughs> so <laughs> one thing I think we can see is there, you know, one of the use cases would be bringing more projects together and having some more work on interoperability and things like that. But I think with the current structure that just becomes 
more difficult. And I'm not sure if a different funding levels or a different, um, a longer term view would help that sort of thing. We haven't really talked about it other than kind of looking at the levels and looking at projects and um, putting our attention on other things, I guess. I basically say, so from my side, I had, had gotten an HTEE award in the first year that it was uh, awarded and then didn't the next year and then did not apply this year. Um, and what happened was a sort of a victim uh, of our success in that, you know, we, based on the work we did in the first HTEE, that was then used to get a, a much larger multi-year, multi-institutional grant was sort of based on that, at least in some, some substantial part. Um, and so the thing has become, yeah, so now we're going after stuff that's that's larger sized, you know, multiple year, uh, not necessarily multi-institution, but at least multiple year stuff since we've gotten this kickstart. So in that way, it's kind of like, oh, this was great. And now we, so um, not, that shouldn't always necessarily be the case. Like, oh, okay, thank you. Now goodbye. Now we're, now we're doing uh, larger grants, but um, yeah, I, I don't know. That's, that's just sort of what just happened by default for us. Where did you get larger grants? DARPA. DARPA. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's not going to be the go-to place for a typical person probably. No, and so it, it just happened that this there was like a good synergy that you know our the, the Python interface we built is now you know uh, quite useful for that um, and other other things as well many other projects as well. But I mean, just like yeah, some of this visuals the the project that's working with Caravi like that also might end up being you know we probably will probably also use that uh, as that becomes more publicly suitable and usable. Um, so yeah, like I, I think I'd, I'd I'd like to. It's just that we've gotten wrapped up in other things right now and I, i'll keep my my ear to the ground and maybe that next year maybe we'll apply again or whatever form hde might be that's but that's just sort of just what happened we just kind of got too busy um to apply again i don't know if helpful for for the group here but i was talking to jim bednar and and he's been tracking pangeo and what's going on there i i heard something that i hadn't heard before and that is you know Pangeo came about where a lot of people invested their own individual time, scientists, whatnot, bringing all these collaborative type of tools together, um, and now they're finding that they're stepping away. Uh, it's something to look out for. If, they're if coming we're, there, what? I'm sorry. I, I missed the last part of the lesson. They're I stepping know. away. They're like, hey, this was great. We built Pangeo, but now we don't want to keep supporting it. We want to get back to our science, right? Um, so, so they're, they're sort of gone through the transition. They've, they've built the technology components, they've integrated it. And now they're like, well, that was, that's cool, but we don't necessarily want to have to keep doing this. We want to get back to our science. It's great to develop. Pangeo is, Pangeo is supposed to enable new science, right? Correct. Correct. But, um, you know, they, that they have to keep updating it there's there and and things like that so i i think they found that they were not able to continue on with doing science so it's something to look out for if you know we're, we're looking to build something along those lines or something similar um that you know uh, it's 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 good to do but there might be on the other side uh, that sort of okay now now that we've done it, what's the addition to make it more stable without us constantly using all of our time to support the technology, whereas we want to use it to actually go back and do our science. Um, so, so does Pangeo need an in influx of, of funding? That uh, Yeah, so there are, there are companies that have taken up um, like COIL, which is a spinoff out of Anaconda, um, especially using the DASC capability. Um, uh, so a lot of these folks are, are trying to find funds um, through, these, through these other companies to support Pangeo uh, because the scientists who initially developed this open collaborative capability, you know, are, are trying to get back to their science uh, and they no longer want to, want to support the, uh, the, the IT that goes with it. And so some of these companies like COIL um are are trying to take up the mantle to support pangeo because they're finding that people are 
you know, for lack of a better word, leaving the support of of the the IT side of Pangeo. Um, and it was news, um, that that I was actually talking to Jim Bednar from Anaconda this past Friday about something I didn't know about, but something we as a community certainly want to be aware of um, as a possibility. Like we we go down this route and build something that's useful for everybody, uh, but then what um, to make sure that it continues. So does has Pangeo produced any home run science? Oh, that's that's a good question. I haven't been tracking too closely. Um, I think that's part of the issue, right? They they built this wonderful capability, and and now they're like, okay, but we're science. Uh, so so maybe that's that's sort of what they're getting at to your question. But I I, I couldn't answer you uh, um, concretely. Okay, so it's an issue that I've been running into a number of times. People want to make machine ready machine learning ready data sets, mm -hmm. and then. There are people at headquarters, NASA headquarters, who are saying we should have a, uh, proposals. You know, we have a, a NRA program that's purely to generate machine learning ready data sets and all that. I find it kind of badly focused um, because I don't think one person's machine learning ready data set is another person's. It has to have different labels, it has to have, you know, there's different, all kinds of things that could be different. And just because you have those data sets does not mean you're doing good science. Um, I really agree on, on that, Aaron. There's, there's a lot of talk about this, but the real work of machine learning is in labeling and defining and categorizing those sets. And that tends to be task specific. I mean, I have no doubt there's stuff that we could be doing to make it um, better and easier. Um, but the idea that one can turn out a single data set that will go into any machine learning driven study is, uh, I think, a pipe dream. Yeah, I've had a number of people agree with me on this. But this sounds interesting to you too, John. Um, there's, one, there's actually one suggestion for HDE from one of the headquarters people was to have it be the machine learning ready data set prep. And I just, I hesitate for the reasons you're saying. In, uh, in the machine learning community, there are you know, suites of data sets that people have collected and posted on a web page that's curated and maintained. And you know, when people write papers, they'll write tests against these well-known data sets. Yeah, yeah there are well-known ones like the integers in in uh, all sorts of bizarre forms. Can you recognize numbers in uh, all right. kinds of different contexts? So sure, that's a good thing. It's a good problem to choose. But so it's one, not what we have, we, we don't do that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, but so uh, one possibility would be is, you know, in, instead of trying to guess what data set would, everybody would find useful is just to support something small where it would, uh, where these things could be hosted and curated. Um, and, you know, the community would build up around that. That's it, a, that's a pretty small effort and it might happen without funding, but uh, I think that's typically the thing that the community finds most useful. And if you're lucky, somebody just kind of ends up doing it. Um, well, we can certainly host them. There's no problem having it in the archives yeah. and, and you know, make a space description so we know where it is and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So, and I, I would see that effort requiring more outreach with, you know, the journals and the community saying that, you know, hey, you can host your stuff here. You post your data. People find it more easily and, you know, they'll end up finding your paper as a result, um, as opposed to you just kind of posting the, you know, the data wherever, wherever you right. find a place to host it. So that, so that, that's something I, I would think would be useful as opposed to, um, yeah, trying to, trying to build a machine ready data set that everybody's going to want to use <laughs> in the next 10 years. So the thing you think would be useful is a hosting platform, essentially. Well, yeah, yeah, but in, in getting it right, though, is, is difficult, though, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's typically 
sort of a lead in the community who just kind of gets people to do it and things just kind of build up around it um, as opposed to just kind of opening up a, a web page saying, hey, hey, send me your stuff that generally gets ignored. So it, it's a difficult problem. And that's why I say it's, it's more outreach and it really depends on the person you have doing it. Right. Right. Getting the right person involved is certainly important. Yeah. So, Alec, um, in terms of the Pangea stuff, I mean, what, what is it that you folks are doing that is or isn't Pangeo kind of things? And where, where do you see better directions? Oh, um, <clears throat> so, so I, I think the goal that the next gen has is to develop an, uh, a, a capability kin to uh, Pangeo, Panhelio, if you will. Um, and of course, the idea of next gen being a company that we'd like to support that infrastructure um, capability. So it is not put upon uh, the scientists so they can actually do their their science work. So that in short is what I think I'm I'm trying to do and and to some degree been been trying to do for for a couple of years now um, and i'm I'm trying to understand what what Pangeo is currently undergoing in terms of this shift from okay, we built it, we've had five or six years of development, but now they're shifting away from the scientists being involved um, so unfortunately i don't I haven't been involved in the community too much. There's a Pangeo machine learning call right after this one that I'm going to be on. There's a data science call, um, a, a data science week in Geo on Wednesday, uh, if folks are interested uh, on listening in, uh, where they have developers talk about, you know, certain certain things um, on that one. So, so no, no, again, no concrete answer there. Um, what but I think, your, yeah, go ahead. If you had something else, I was going to say, what is your business model? Right. So next gen's typical business model working with the Department of Defense is build build a technology that's useful. We give government all purpose and basically hope that we do good good enough work that we are taken along for the ride. Uh, meaning we are we are hired for sustainment and development and improvements for the technology set, um, and that's typically the business model. Uh, and these these are all government purpose rights that typically come out of SBIRs and things like that. And we're like, yeah, we'll, we'll give you guys obviously all government purpose rights, even though they're SBIR rights. Um, and, and we hope that because we develop something good, um, you guys let us continue development and we'll live for bodies on the work um, and, and have a couple of hires uh, that support the effort. Okay, you're breaking up a little bit, but then, sorry, it sounds like you're, you're talking about sort of the Helio viewer kind of support where we <clears throat> we have this service, Helio Viewer, that um, lots of people like and play with. And, and so instead of having people pay to use it, it's just maintained as part of infrastructure. Right. Be part of a program of record, so to speak, under under NASA or some sort of collaborative agency between DOD, NOAA, and NASA uh, type of technology, since it is, you know, that that space weather connection between the agencies right so i mean that's the that's the dream whether it's a pipe dream or not i'm not sure uh but but uh certainly an interagency type of capability seems seems like the the way to go um and and you know dod does program of records type of thing and and it just seems like this type of capability that this community is talking about does need to be integrated somehow um if if, if it is an option to program record um so, so it can be, you know, there's, there's a funding line every year for it. And so it doesn't come down to what has happened in Pangeo where it's relying on soft money grants and things like that um, and detracts from the science in which it actually was developed to be used for. Does, has Pangeo ever really dealt with the very large volumes of data? Yes, they, they they do have have some good examples out there. Again, I'm I'm not the best 
person to they do right they they set up the their their capabilities um to to deal with very very large sort of climate data in particular uh the the main focus ha has been climate for pangeo and things like that okay other thoughts we i don't feel a convergence here <laughs> Um, so one thing I would quite like to see going forward would be coordination between what we're currently calling the core packages. Um, so I know people talked about the sensitivity of um, kind of choosing one package over the others, but I think we, you know, I think long term it'd be really good to recommend an opinionated set of core packages to do the core stuff and make sure functionality doesn't overlap between them. Um, so yeah, what struck me from the meeting was of the core packages, there aren't really clear boundaries between what each package does. Um, Is that true? I mean, I'm not, <laughs> I haven't dug down deeply enough to see when most of them have duplication to some extent on the IO part, although I guess there is sharing there as well, so that's good. But then I'm less clear on what the specific kinds of analysis routines are overlapping or not overlapping. On the visualization side, coming from Komodo team, um, the thing that stood out to me is that there are so many packages that are looking to fight their own visualization software, but it's already done. <laughs> it's already done by Komodo, it's already done by the Spike Team Cloud. Um, there's several things already out there that need to be implemented rather than copied. Is that the kind of thing you were talking about, David? Yeah, I guess so. Okay. If you have something else in mind, then you can describe that. Yeah, I guess. I guess my initial thoughts were more. So, um, obviously, so I guess the context is I've written HeliaPi, but I'm not sure how much like Helio, the tools available in HeliaPi, overlap, say, with SpacePi, and whether you can get similar data sets in both packages. Um, and that on a HelioPi level is important because I have limited time and it'd be good to know if, you know, if there's another core package that supports this, then I can spend my time doing other stuff. Um, so you don't, to, you don't want to have to crank up SpacePi every time you need to have a particular data set and understand there and then you have to do the translation to your environment right yeah and those are the kind of things that i was trying to figure a way to resolve that it does i mean john vandegrift i don't think is on mentioned that this does perhaps involve some people relinquishing some of the things that they had developed in favor of somebody else's solution Yeah. Randy is on vacation this week. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, I would I would just quickly add to that um, that at least personally I you know it takes t me time to maintain stuff. So in some ways, relinquishing stuff to other packages would be a positive thing for me and HeliaPi at the moment. Um, but it's yeah, I think it's a case of. Maybe just all the core packages should sit down and we should we should plan a meeting and kind of think about in you know one, two years time what how do we want everything to be divided up between us? I've always liked that idea as something to shoot for. Yeah, I like that idea too. 
I think mm -hmm. in, in the end, there's probably still going to be some overlap, um, particularly um, there are philosophies, there are interfaces, there are some differences there. Um, you know, for instance, SpacePy is not really oriented towards presenting one particular, you know, it, it, it tries not to think about missions, right? And, well, if, if you have the data in a particular format, we can run with it. Um, and so I think there's room for um, some overlap still, and particularly some um, overlap of functionality if the workflow doesn't overlap. Um, but in some of those cases, it might also be a, a case where one package to maintain their interface winds up wrapping another one. Um, so I'm thinking in particular of the, the spice wrappers I wrote and have never released <laughs> that in my copious spare time, I want to rework those to just be working straight off of spicy pie. So I guess this was part of the notion that I had with in proposing that HDE have a 300 K per year for five or for three years or something like that offering or maybe whatever the price needs to be, maybe it's bigger, maybe it's smaller, I don't know. But the idea would be that you could get, that we could hopefully get all the people, all the relevant people to propose to put together one program that did fund putting these people into the same room, hopefully literally the same room. <laughs> um, So and that, that would be the idea, and some some one of the groups presumably would put forward a an organizer to get everybody together and and work in a common direction. And then we'd have core packaging core packages talking together more, which would I think facilitate working together better. And something I'd like to see more of is actually. Um, I think there's more examples of using multiple packages that are available in PyHC for particular workflows. That's, um, that's kind of something that me and Rebecca started working on a little project. We're trying to rope in John and Nick for um, Space Pi and Plasma Pi help. But the idea being that we've, we found a particular workflow where we can bring a few packages together and if you can uh, use one for one part of the problem, then the other for the other part of the problem. And then at the end, you've got something that worked and we can um, kind of explain to people how, how you use these packages together. We're, me and Rebecca's project, we're planning on maybe writing a little bit of a, a paper about it. It was some work that she had already started. But doing this kind of thing as a community, I think is exactly what PyHC is for. And I've been kind of trying to build up to a spot where we're better positioned to do that kind of work on the on a more regular basis right well this part of the question is is uh is this something that can be done with people working together with you sean as the glue you know one funded person yeah, that's the thing, right? I'm trying to yeah, be, be glue in some sense, just kind of be helpful and bop around between areas because I am getting paid to do this almost full time. That, and that is my job in that sense. Right. But we don't have anyone else like me. So it's dependent on other people to kind of use their free time, whereas I'm, you know, just kind of doing my thing. Right. And it's interesting. I mean, it seems like some of the groups are... I would say almost wedded to the idea of the model of it's done on people's spare time. Um, and why, why didn't people reach out more for the 75K they could have gotten from IHC this time around? I, mean, I guess that's maybe a COVID answer, but um, so anyway, I, I guess there's Totally abandoned the notion that I had originally. Is that is that something? Okay, let's let's bring that up to. Let's see, Nick, you said you'd be interested. Let's see, we got uh, John Niehoff. Would Space Pi be interested in becoming part of a 
And yeah, so I, I actually did email back to uh, folks a couple of days ago that, yeah, if um, we want to put together a, a nice example of combining things, that would be great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, with the usual notation of copious spare time. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I mean, I, mean, I guess in your case, John, you've got um, mission responsibilities that take most of your time, right? Yeah, but I, I again think that's a, a good thing. I think we should have some people in this project, um, you know, the PHC project on the whole, who are really focused on developing the tools kind of for the tool's sake, but also people who are much more focused on getting papers published or operating a mission. Or um, It's hard to get pulled in multiple ways, but I, I really do think having a, a leavening of folks with kind of different priorities um, makes these much more likely to be useful. Yeah, I think you, you can't just have people developing these things in a vacuum, nor can you have people who are just So who else here? David Stansby, you have another one of these things. And you just, I guess we can't fund you as easily. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm certainly interested in um, being a part of a, a drive to make stuff more interoperable or um, putting examples together. Um, but yeah, as you say, I'm in the UK, so it's yeah. probably pretty tricky to fund me. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm certainly very keen to start talking more to people from the Helio Pi side. Um, I feel like I haven't been doing that much, but I'm keen to do that going forward, yeah. And this PySat, I don't see a representative PySat person. I see a representative PySat. It's Jeff, not oh, just Jeff. me. Yeah. yeah. I don't. Oh, I see. Uh, Jonathan is here as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm interested in how we can kind of pull all the projects together. Um, one of the things we've been doing with this last version has been trying to pull out our dependencies or you know, like plotting routines and things like that that are being handled elsewhere, um, as well as taking um, some of the little statistical things and pushing that into other packages like SciPy, and just kind of trying to get that at the lower possible level. Or Jeff, I think that's a really out. good one. I was just saying, I thought is some of the stuff we might want to coordinate amongst us, but some of us, it, we might look at and go, how can we help each other get this stuff into SciPy instead of one of the PyHC packages? Yeah, I mean, there was a really simple thing that we were doing, which was calculating statistics around, you know, ignoring NANDs for when you're calculating statistics. And that ultimately that just went up to SciPy. Um, X-Array is another one that I think we probably should all be working with because that's still in a very developmental stage. We've been looking at, or if there's another suggestion for a multi-dimensional array that we should move to. On, on that uh, X-Ray specifically, we had a, a meeting on Friday um, discussing X-Ray's use we we have embarked on that project uh, with Anaconda, a Python developer from NASA, Goddard, Cameron, uh, Barbara Thompson. Um, and so if you're interested, we are we are endeavoring to make X-Ray work with World Coordinate System instead of using the smaller, less distributed package ND cube. So please let me know. Okay. Yeah, I mean, a lot of what we're doing now is trying to get better X-Ray support with some of the multi-dimensional data sets and a lot of it right now is logging what the problems are with those. I think that's fantastic. I've been, uh, as a side note, I've been using X-Ray back since it was X-Ray before they renamed it. And uh, I think, yeah, like I said, NDCube has been out there and good too, but it's nice to see people sort of coalescing on whatever that solution may be. And I've been generally happy with X-Ray over the years. Yep, we got Stuart and Michael Kirk involved on, on helping that out in terms of guidance. Um, but, you know, it's it's not funded, right? So this is all very much Jim Bednar from Anaconda is trying to find somebody on the X-Ray team that can actually 
help us because X-ray is much, very much focused on geospatial stuff, even though it's been used for microscopes and things like that. And in some ways, obviously going to world coordinate systems, it's, it's, it's more closer, more closely related. Um, so, so we're hoping to make some headway. And like you said, it, it's still old stage. Um, and an interesting side note I knew, uh, I didn't know was uh, NumPy sort of got away from the original developer who founded Anaconda and, and basically they're trying to make X-Array so it is, um, you know, extensible um, and, and not sort of a, a one-way path where NumPy was, was developed and NumPy sort of became the immovable object um and and really uh x-ray is 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 trying not to be that and and trying to develop in a in a smart in a smart way but you do need that ball and, and that time from from the community to actually get the people who know heliophysics coordinate systems and and work with that so it's exciting hopefully we make some headway on 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 that progress but again if you're interested in helping out uh please let me know we're, we're trying to shoestring it right now you have use cases. Uh, use cases for me are 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 mainly uh, solar imagery data sets, um, of course, uh, AIA. Uh, so that's the goal. Basically, be able to stream and analyze terabytes of data uh, in a in a click of a button or a click of a regional box. Um, so that's 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 my particular use case to 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 focus on. Um, you know, for instance, post flare loop analysis. You do a selection box, and then you're able to compare 131 against 193 uh, against whatever other wavelengths, and then you can see the uh, the plasma cooling in those respective channels, um, and you can get the timing of the plasma cooling across them uh, for, for all all of the flares uh, very quickly and effectively if you're able to get uh, you know SDO AIA data in into x-ray format um, but you could do it now uh, if you didn't care about coordinate systems of course we we'd like to know where you're where you're looking at on the sun but that in short is is just one example use case that i'd like to focus on other than just being able to go through the data sets really quickly and analyze them So where are we? <laughs> Is there, and it sounds like it would be a good idea at some level to get nominal core packages. I was trying to find uh, high speed S is the other one that she has. Mm -hmm. Don't think Eric is here. Oh, Eric, Eric is here, okay. Yeah, what about high speed S? So internally, PySpeedS uses, <clears throat> of course, PyTplot, which uh, depends on X-ray. Um, so I'm really interested in all the work going to X-ray. Um, what about the general integration of packages? Uh, yeah, I mean, we one big thing is uh, licenses. I think there are uh, various licenses, like ours is MIT, but there are others that are uh, what is it, GPL3? And uh, I think that's troublesome is trying to bring stuff that's GPL3 into MIT, right? I'm not an expert, but uh, I'd rather not have to get the lawyers involved for licensing issues. Um, yeah, it'd be nice if people could generalize their licenses. Well, it's, yeah, I mean, Pi HC in general, I think from that position statement, even a couple of years ago, greatly encourages non copy left licenses, for example, like encourages not using GPL and those sort of licenses. But right, we are left with a legacy of those licenses and other proprietary and very restrictive licenses like uh, on MSIS 2.0 and, and stuff like that, where there's even, you know, no, no copy, you know, no copy, no distribute licenses that make it interesting to sort of make packages uh, using them. So the package that I'm thinking out specifically is uh, HelioPi. I think HelioPi is GPL3. Yes, that is true. And I got halfway towards um, 
changing that and never follow through on it. Um, but if that's an issue, I can bump that to the middle of my um, to-do list from the bottom, if, if that's a practical issue that people are facing. I think that would help with enabling greater integration to change it to like a MIT or BSD license. Yeah, we happen on our projects, we happen to use Apache, which is also non copyleft It has some patent uh, stuff involved. But yeah, I think even, I think we haven't had anybody complain about Apache anyway, but yeah, MIT, BSD, ISC, all those family, family of licenses, non copyleft stuff. Yeah, we do have the unfortunate thing that um, even once we get everybody to a, a permissive license, they're all compatible, but they're not all the same. Um, and, and we don't even have one obvious recommendation. I think probably BSD with as few clauses as possible is probably the best. But for instance, SpacePy is PSF licensed because it seemed like a good idea at the time and it was not. <laughs> I was muted. How hard is it to change that, John? That involves getting Los Alamos lawyers involved. Oh, goody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, that's what happened to Goddard when he tried to open up even the CEDA live service stuff, you know, the CEDA, um, CDF stuff. Yeah, I mean, technically at, at this point, I, I'm living dangerously because I haven't gotten official tech transfer permission at UNH, um, you know, at this point, given that the team is multi-institutional, um, and we've talked before about how this is a, re a real point of exposure, because unless you're getting full tech transfer permission from every single institution of every single contributor, you potentially have exposure there. Yeah, that's the problem with the Goddard thing. It takes a year to go through the list. Yeah, um, and part of it is we're kind of doing a see no evil of this is a community project now and therefore not owned by an institution um and part of you know what i'm trying to do is you know where there's funding and such put a stipulation in the um statement of work of course um which is where you know if we had good requirements from nasa that would help but um i, I can go on all day on that topic well, the, the tendency is to make every, to force everything to be open licenses. And that's, that's what NASA's, the data policies and all that are going to be that way. Exactly. And I'm not sure how specific, but uh, certainly should deal with some of these problems. Yeah, and we definitely put that in our PyHC standards as the packages should have open licenses. So it sounds like there may be some problems with this. There's HelioPy, SpacePy. Plasma Pi okay? It were um, a BSD plus patent license, which is a BSD two clause, well, three clause with um, additional rights granted to um, like to prevent um, what Richard Stallman calls patent treachery. So um, additional protections for users. Um, but the in effect, it's like the BSD three clause license. Yeah, and, and on the space by side, I mean, the PSF is pretty similar to the, the BSD. It's all compatible. Um, it's just a question of um, whether somebody is going to come out of the woods and claim we didn't have the rights to grant that license. Yeah, I do wonder about that. It's easy enough to write the license into the header of the file, but. <laughs> Is it real? Okay, anyway, I um, think there may be some convergence here. 
Mm -hmm. um, there's various ways of going about such things. If if you really if we really had the team that we wanted and it was unique, then we could do this as a sole source thing. And maybe even make it a contract as John uh, John Vanderdick was talking about. But um, the other way to do it is just to put out an HD call and then have it and presume that the right people are going to propose to it collectively. I think in the past, perhaps Aaron or others have mentioned um, also, you know, that that funding would, might last longer if it was going to grad students, like if there was a capable grad student to do this. I think that's probably, this has probably been discussed several months ago. I just didn't remember what the conclusions were. Well, that was, that was the idea of the 25K grant that we put into HDE. You know, that's a meaningful sum to a graduate student. Okay, any other thoughts, comments? Anybody see a resolution that we want? We clearly need to go in a certain direction. Um, one thing that I have been bringing up most years is the possibility of a PIHC um, proposal to the NSF Cyber Infrastructure for Sustained Scientific Innovation program. And that could be like a three to five year proposal in the um, couple of mega dollar um, range. So it would require a lot of coordination ahead of time, um, like figuring out what our plan is. Um, and that I think also would be a useful exercise, but it would be a lot of work to put such a proposal together. When is the next due date? Um, I don't know if they have it. It's usually October or November. Well, for what it's worth, that's exactly the kind of stuff I'm trying to work on. That's worth something. <laughs> if we can... I don't know. Last time we were a little bit late into the game, and so it was hard to get anything going. This time, if people wanted to start that, I think it's a great idea because it's a, another pot that's independent and has uh, a fairly significant amount of money in it. Yeah, actually, Sean, were you involved in the? that proposal we submitted to that call last year on the web team? I I don't remember, actually. Need a refresher. Yeah, I mean, we didn't succeed, but now that I've been through it once, I think actually having you lead that up would, would could work really well because <clears throat> we have some experience in, in just the process of submitting to the NSF. <laughs> Yeah, NSF has other requirements like this, essentially education outreach piece that always has to be there. Yeah. But that shouldn't be hard to do. So does somebody want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> you want to be PI on the proposal to the cyber infrastructure? That could be exciting. Um, let's see, realistically speaking, me and Rebecca have started up another little project here and I need to see that maybe through to the end before doing something like that. But I could also maybe take on both at the same time, depending on how big of a task it actually is. Is the project with Rebecca something that should be a topic for this discussion or? Yeah, I was hoping to bring it up just in the last few minutes of this call here, which I guess we're getting dangerously close to, but I also might 
wait until next time to bring it up to give us a two minute overview two minute overview <laughs> is um something that we were talking about actually on day four of the spring meeting when we were talking about this um we were all brainstorming for ideas on how to get new examples in the PyHD gallery. And um, one of the examples was to, um, one of Rebecca's ideas, which we're running with, it was to get space data and clean it with SpacePy and functionalize it with Komodo, use PlasmaPy to calculate some plasma parameters and then visualize it in Komodo. And then we can, we can do that chain to get some interesting results and then write about how we used the different packages just to do this one just to demonstrate how you can do it and then there's a scientific angle that rebecca had already started working on where she has some model data that we could um, compare to our output and it'd be like a half science paper a half kind of technical it paper on how to use the packages and um, I would pare down the work just to make a little example, just like a, you know, a little notebook on our PyHC gallery. How do you use these packages together? But then we could do a meteor example um, in the paper that seems more impressive. And where we're well on the way in this effort, uh, the only thing we don't have is a data set to start with. But Rebecca has actually written a lot of the code and I think even started the paper, et cetera. How can you write a paper without a data set? <laughs> well, she's she's done the Komodo half of this, and there's been a lot of development that went into getting it ready to work with Plasma Pi. Well, that sounds useful. Yeah, and uh, say say I reach out to Rebecca about it first, just thinking I was gonna write some code and stick an example on the gallery, and then. She's like, well, why don't we get Nick on a call to answer some Plasma Pi questions? And then we did that during Plasma Pi's office hours. And then shortly afterward, I emailed John to rope him into it, maybe looking for um, help with Space Pi and um, suggestions for data sets. People keep mentioning MMS as a good one to start with. So we might be starting to narrow down on that, but still need to a science problem. brainstorm about that. Yeah, if you go with MMS, you should probably be using PySpeedS. PySpeedS as opposed to SpacePy. Well, I'm not sure how, uh, what kind of support they have for MMS. Not as opposed to, but it is, is, it's, it has specific support, so that's useful. But maybe yeah, we, things that Space, the ideal is that SpacePy is doing things that, um, High speed S is not, right? So you can leverage the two. I mean, I don't I don't mind bringing on another package one bit. I like, I mean, just from my end of this thing, forgetting the science, I like showing how to use our Python packages together. So the more the merrier in that sense. Yeah, so we have all of the MMS data products in PySpeed S. Um, all the team only data, the L2 data, the L3 data. Uh, even the post-processing uh, data products that are created on the fly. I mean, we actually, we received support from the MMS team to provide all of this. So, uh, so uh, just shoot me an email or copy me on the, the one that you sent. And uh, I can show you how to access basically all of the MMS data just using PySpeedS. Cool. Well, thank you very much, Eric. Um, you'll probably be getting an email from me in a little bit later. Yeah, so I'm hoping maybe I can use that just as an example of how to start doing this kind of thing. I mean, I know it's not the first time PyHC has done an effort like this, but it certainly is since I got involved and maybe we're all a little bit rusty after the pandemic. So I'm looking forward to having this output as a, as a positive example of how PyHC can come together and do stuff. It sounds like it may not be the absolute first, but it's certainly one of the, one of the first. Mm -hmm. And I guess to tie it into the larger conversation, that's kind of being facilitated by Rebecca was already doing her own work at her own job and 
I just came over here saying, hi, I want to help glue some things together. And I'm getting paid to do that. I see we have a couple minutes left. Russell, did you just join us? I hadn't noticed you're on before. Have you been privy uh, to this conversation? And Sorry, yeah. I didn't quite catch that. Could you please repeat it? Uh, uh, yeah, I was on. Yeah, um, certainly. I think it's an interesting thing from NSF, and uh, you know, I think PySat could be a, a good contribution here. Of course, we have a number of, of that the data sets in PySat, and and the intent is to, uh, you know, make PySat even more general than perhaps just space science. So, um, I think there's possibility for you know, if if interest, you know, PySat can play a, a supporting role or play its part in in, a, in this type of effort or. Well, not just in, this, but in general, what, what you're feeling about collab collaboration with the other, quote, core packages in PyHC. With regard to the NSF? No, no, just in general. Um, well, I think, I mean, it would be good if we had more efforts to get the, the core packages working together. Um, so, you know. Like and, the idea, do you like the idea of a larger HD? Uh, for this kind of effort. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, I mean, PySat's also hooked into Komodo also already. So, I mean, there's there's some integrations, at least in my part, neck of the woods. Um, and I would like to get it more integrated. And usually that requires funding. <laughs> so people have time to do that. Right. I'm trying to also get a sense of if we did this, is 300K per year total for three years enough? Uh, for how many people? Well, that's the question. Mm -hmm. when, when, what, is, what is the level of effort that we need to make it really a useful thing? Uh, well, 300K, I mean, you can get uh, two to three people, I suppose, um, pretty decently supported, right, about half time or so, um, or in that in that uh, area um, for, you know, on the developer side, not, not including students. Uh, and if you had, you know, three people or something like that, that's, that's a, a pretty good, um, you can get a lot accomplished with three people. So, um, yeah, you need the right three people. That's right. Yeah. So, um, this would be something I, I mean, I'm interested in, in, in working on this call. So, um, I could be potentially one of the three people, I suppose. Um, <laughs> uh, so it's, it's certainly an area I'm interested in and, um, I'm looking for some more software support. Uh, and um, yeah, no oh, good. This is beautiful. Um, I guess my time is up. I can hand it back to Julie. But uh... I'm sorry, Aaron. My my connection just went out a little bit. It's raining here. Um, could you repeat that? I'm just saying that I think we our hour is up, but. Uh, yeah. This has been useful, and um, if people have any other thoughts, please send them send them along to me. Yeah, and or Julie, and or whoever. And hey, um, it is perfectly okay if the answer is no. But while I have you all on the call, I wanted to ask Nick and John and Eric if you all could stay on for five more minutes after the call to chat about my project. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. one yes. I, I'm double checking to make sure that John means here, me, and I think it does here. So yes. Yes, it, it, does, <laughs> it does mean you here. Yes. Apologies for the amb ambiguity. <laughs> cool. cool. Well, I just well, need to be the host, Sean. So when I leave, hopefully this doesn't end. Okay, wonderful. Well, and of course, I get a phone call from Safeway, right, as you make the host. <laughs> um, okay, anyway. <laughs> no problem. I think you also have control of the recording now, just FYI. Yep, I got it. Woo -woo.
All right. Well, thanks for the discussion today, everyone. Um, we have a telecon slot in two weeks on the 21st at 9 a.m. Currently, topics are open for discussion. So if anyone has ideas that they'd like to bring up, let me know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's all I have. Okay, thanks. Yeah. yeah thank you, Julian. Thank you, everyone else. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. Hey, I, I apologize. I don't, how to, I don't know how to pronounce your name, but Lutz, I recognize your name from the email chain that Rebecca included you on. Thank you for hanging around and listening. But okay, so um, I wanted to talk about actually MMS for just a quick second. Um, I'm, I'm familiar with the mission. Uh, my, my team at LASP helps support some of their data but I, I don't know very much about the science that's been coming out of it because it's not my area here. So I wondered, um, first of all, Nick, do you remember enough of our conversation from, I think it was Friday, to remember the, the kind of work we're trying to do? Yep. Yep. And then um, next question is, are you familiar enough with MMS to think it's a bad idea to start running down? Oh. Yeah, just trying to narrow it down into something with passion because I would like to start narrowing it. I think MMS would be good because it, you can, um, like if you want to connect to space weather models, um, there are a bunch that you could do that with. Mm -hmm. um, and the science area is interesting. It's on magnetic reconnection, which back when I did research, it was on that. Um, in oh, different nice. environments, but. Okay, so that's useful. Yeah, let me, I'm gonna, now I have fewer people, I can, you know, turn the video on and not like blow everybody's connection. Um, the reason I suggested MMS is because uh, it's a reasonably current mission. Um, so the data sets are fairly mature and kind of compliant with current standards. Um, and it is, a, as Nick said, it's a multi-point uh, mission. And so you get into much more interesting stuff when you're thinking about um, calculating plasma parameters and that sort of thing. Um, that also makes the visualizations much more interesting. Um, there's also um, quite a bit of involvement across um, PyHC in it, as Eric points out. Um, you know, they're involved. Um, Steve Morley, who's on SpacePy, is um, heavily involved in uh, so, some of the stuff from MS. So it's it just seems like something that's a good mission. Um, and it can cross <laughs> physically and figuratively um, helio and magnetospheric, um, which you would not get if you want to, you know, do something to say, I don't know, RB or Themis or something. It just, um, so it's, it seems like a good thing to um, pick a topic on. Yeah, no, and I, and I, I would be happy to be work, to be starting out with a data set that I'm somewhat familiar with. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting into deep waters here with all the plasma physics that I don't know, but hey, I've seen MMS data before. Um, so let's, so let's see here. And Eric, you mentioned that we can definitely get that data from, um, Pi speed S. Do you think John, that it's worth doing that just instead of space Pi? or I don't know. I, I haven't used the packages enough to know. Yeah. I mean, that, that's kind of, um, up to you. So again, space Pi doesn't provide any direct support for any particular mission. Um, so what we've got, you know, we can open up those CDFs and, and do stuff with them. Um, and we've got, um, we, we don't have like an automatic go and grab and run thing yet. Um, but I think that, you know, we can be there, to open the files, we can be there to do some other random stuff. Um, but honestly, if we're just looking at getting as many packages involved as possible, um, it, it may make more sense to use Pi Speed S as the data acquisition um, approach because we can still be doing stuff from the space Pi side with um, with some of Dan's uh, visualizations. Um, so we can, you know, right. can pretty easily run something with space weather modeling framework and you know get a visualization out from there. Um, we can find some other corner. I mean, even if it's simple as doing like the coordinate transforms, like one of the stupid simple things we've got 
as an example in the space by docs is doing coordinate rotations with our quaternion oh. support on the MMS data. Oh, totally. Right. Nice. And that's so, our docs as an example. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it's something yeah, we can certainly do that role, but I suspect we can find another role for space if it makes more sense to have high speed as be the um, data grabber and parser and um, processor into form of, you know, use. So what I was thinking was uh, load the data in with Pi Speed S and then do analysis with a uh, uh, space by. Or uh, I, I'd really be interested in seeing the coordinate transformation stuff, especially if you already have the quaternion stuff. We have that stuff in IDL, but we don't have it in Python. Yes, yeah, so we, we've got the quaternion stuff. We've got like, you know, stupid, simple stuff like the shoe magneto pause, right? Mm -hmm. um, we've got the, the much uh fancier visualization stuff that Danton does with pi bats um and so i think there are definitely bits and pieces we can pull in and have it be you know cool and interesting um involving space pi um while still having you know pi speed s have you know some of that um that role as well so i think it probably makes more sense to say let's let's organizationally it's a pain in the neck but let's get as many of these projects in as we can yeah, sweet. I like it. Um, I can, I mean, Rebecca. Obviously, so I'll go back and read this. It'll be good. Um, let's see, Aaron, one maybe last question here. Um, we, we, Rebecca had considered um, using space pi or something else to clean the data once we'd already gotten it, but you said you're serving all levels of MMS data. So is it safe to assume that you have like, I don't know, some level three or sufficiently high level of science ready data that we wouldn't really need to clean it before we went off and did interesting things? I guess it depends on what clean it means. Um, yeah, it, it always depends on what clean it means, doesn't it? But for the most part, we are uh, releasing the science quality data set with all the instrument teams uh, adjustments. Like for FEEPS, we have the sun contamination correction and we have- uh, okay, yeah flat field corrections and all oh, great you're reminding me of nightmares of dealing with the feet sun contamination <laughs> <laughs> okay good good well thank you all so much for answering the questions um i don't, I don't want to keep you too much past sure. the time here and sean in general i would i would say that given the nature of this um project using the the high level data probably makes a lot of sense um i i don't think there's a a, a need to complicate it by grabbing lower level stuff and doing more processing than we need to. Gotcha. Agreed. All right. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I think actually let's, um, one suggestion I would have for the way we spin this, I, sorry, I just ran through my, out, out my head, um, is less about here's how these packages work together and more about here's how you do science in the broad Python ecosystem, which includes these PyHC packages, but it's you know not just us working together, but it is the NumPy and the Matplotlib and all that stuff. And um, I think that's a real strength of the way this is developed is that um, we're using a Matplotlib, we're using NumPy, you know, th there's no argument over, should I be writing my own plotting functions? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now there, there's argument about maybe PyQt plot is where we should be, and, and and sure those are good conversations to have. But um. yes, but yeah, more examples of I mean we're trying to be the Python community doing this stuff, coming up with the good ways to do it. So yeah, and so other yeah. stuff we, we've got yeah the Quaternion transformations. We also have coordinate transformations that are right now backed by Urbum, but we're in the process of rewriting those. Um, and we also have the port over into the AstroPy time um, and working on the AstroPy coordinates. So if there were some way that, you know, pulling those AstroPy things would make sense, that's um, a place we can be a gateway. Awesome. True. Awesome. Well, um, let's see. I'll, I think I'll have to go back and do a bit of regrouping with Rebecca first, and I might reach out to all or some of you through email coming soon. Yeah, and one thing just to know on my front, um, once I've got a lot of th things in the air right now and exactly what my life is gonna look like in two to three months, I, I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> partly because we're coming at the end of phase A for the, the mid-X. 
Um, so depending on decisions there, I might still have a lot more time. Um, but the other thing is, if we decide to seek some funding on this, I do have two weeks of proposal writing time available that I have to use by the end of the fiscal. So that's like end of July. End of July. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think we'd be wanting to yeah down by July. So I'll so if, if we think this is, or you know, if we go great guns on the NSF thing, I can perhaps be more available on writing that than I, I otherwise am sometimes. Sweet. All right, well, I should get going, so. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, Thank I should, you. I should too. Thanks, guys. This is cool. Yep. Bye. Yep. And I'm going to stop.